Hey, this is Matthew Robbins, uh, pastor of Living Water Church and president of Basilea Ministries. We're here at the Grand Canyon, gonna do a few short clips for you. And you can see the magnificent canyon behind me, uh, part of God's creation, most likely a result of the flood when Noah was around. Uh, the title of today's little clip is In God We Trust. I wanna read Psalm 146, verses three through five. It says, do not put your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His spirit departs, he returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. Happy is he who has God of Jacob for his help. Uh, there's one thing that Christians and sinners, both people of the world agree on, death is a certain thing. Everybody's gonna see death. Well, of course, the exception of the rapture. So uh, there's a common cliche out in the world that says there's two things that are certain, death and taxes. So the Bible actually tells us that death is certain. So the world agrees with the church there. So what our challenge is for you today is what do you trust in? In God we trust is on our money here in this country. And, but most people that's a foreign idea too because they, we've learned or been conditioned to trust in other things. And so the challenge for us uh, as humans is to not put our trust in the wrong things. Uh, so if you think about what I just read to you there, God admonishes us not to put our trust in men because they're not eternal. Uh, their plans are going to die when they die. And their help, whatever help they give us, that also is going to perish when they're gone. So God really stresses throughout the whole Bible that we should put our trust in Him. That's eternal and that's a sure and steadfast. He's immovable. The Bible also teaches us that He changes not. So God can be trusted. I want to read to you now from the New Testament in uh, 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19. It says, Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. So right there, God kind of puts a damper on hoarding and and all of us having all these plans and living our lives out of fear. The Bible says He gives us all things to enjoy. Uh, and so we don't have the promise of tomorrow. None of us do. Doesn't matter if you're a Christian or a sinner. None of us have the promise of tomorrow. So God gave us uh, great things to enjoy, one of which we're standing here in front of today. Uh, but He didn't want us to be hoarders or to have our confidence in money or people or science, all those things have a role to play in their life in our lives, but they don't they don't protect us. There's none of that stuff is lasting. I think it was Solomon who said, "Riches can make wings and fly away." So we we want to put ourselves in a position where we trust in God. You know, I love my mother and my father, but I they they are immortal. They're mortal, not immortal. So they they don't have the ability to carry me to where I need to go. And so any of that, I love my wife, I love my family, my church family, all of us, but all of us are limited and all of us are gonna see death someday if the Lord don't return. So our confidence and our trust should be in the Lord. So he goes on to say, he says, let them do good that they may be rich in good works, uh, ready to give, willing to share. The world, if they read the Bible, they would love that verse because they're always telling us to be kind to one another. So even commercials, we've spent millions of dollars on commercials to tell people to be kind to one another. Uh, hey, that's what the Bible's been teaching for thousands of years. Uh, and it's free, your Bible's free. You can pick one up, uh, they give them away, the Gideons and all kinds of different areas. Uh, and then he says, storing, uh, he says, be uh, good works ready to give, willing to share storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that that may lay hold that they may lay hold on eternal life. So here's the, here's the deal. There's a time to come that all of us are going to be standing in eternity. And what matters is whether you've put your trust in God and his son Jesus Christ. Uh, in God we trust. That's been our motto in this country. Most people have lost that. We've we've tried to trust in people. We've tried to trust in uh, science, we've tried to trust in education, all those things are limited. None of those things are eternal. And so the thing that we need to put our confidence and our trust in is God. In God we trust. Do you trust in God or have you trusted in every other thing in this life? Do you trust in somebody? 
Do you trust in politics? Do you trust in money? Do you trust in science? Do you trust in education? What do you trust in? Well, God makes it clear that we're supposed to trust in Him. He gives us everything. So we should uh, maybe rethink that. Our mind is bombarded with so many options. We have so many options in this culture, and it's hard to keep our mind in a position to where we can focus on the very thing that we need to put our trust in. So we're challenging you today to put your trust in God, the one that made this canyon and everything you see behind me, the one that's going to uh, call us to stand before Him someday. And that day, when you and I are challenged, we're gonna, that, what we're going to face is whether or not we've put our trust in Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the only begotten Son of God. So we challenge you today, as you look at this vast expanse behind me, to put your trust in the one that created everything. The Bible is clear that God created, and there's so much evidence that this stuff didn't happen on its own. So we just pray that you'll take another look today and see what it is you put your trust in. And maybe you should take another look at God's Word and see all the confirmations that we see in this world today from chariot wheels being at the bottom of the Red Sea that they've been able to photograph, all the things that we've found. I want to leave you with this. When I'm talking about trust and standing here at this great divide, this canyon, I had a vision years ago. And in my vision, I saw a great gulf, a canyon. And I was standing with a crowd of people. And from one side of the canyon to the other, there was, it looked like a uh, a rail off of a train track. I grew up around that, used to work in the mines, so I'm familiar with all that. But what it looked to me like was one rail that connected both sides of the canyon, just one small rail. If you've ever seen a train track, you know that thing's about three inches across, possibly four at the most. And so it's a very small rail. And so I watched, and, and Jesus was in my vision, and I knew it was Christ. And I was observing everything, the crowd of people that was on the side where I was at. And then I looked across the canyon, and there were people on the other side. And then in my vision, I went and looked over and looked down in the canyon. There were all kinds of dead bodies laying in the canyon. And as I was observing what was going on, I watched people get in a wheelbarrow and sit in that wheelbarrow. And Jesus took that wheelbarrow across that tiny rail and took them to the other side. And when he dropped them off, he would come back for another person. Uh, and, and so I watched all this, and I finally asked the question, uh, what are all those people in the canyon, the ones that are down there dead? And the Lord said to me, he said, those are the ones that have tried to get across on their own. And the ones that were getting in the wheelbarrow and letting him take them over, they were doing just fine. So the issue is trust. The issue is trust. So will you get in the wheelbarrow today? Will you trust in the Lord, the one that created everything you're looking at behind me, wonderful creation, or are you going to trust in something else? It really is a matter of life and death. God bless you.